This is Business Analytics Using Forecasting. I'm Galit Mueli. In this video, we'll continue talking about trend models, and this time we'll see other types of trend besides a linear trend. In the previous video, we saw how to fit a linear or additive trend. In this video, we'll see two other shapes. One is an exponential, also called multiplicative trend, and the other is a quadratic trend. After that, we'll see videos that talk about seasonality. An exponential trend model means that our trend is multiplicative. In our quarterly sales scenario, this would mean that sales grow by a percentage amount each quarter. In other words, the trend is the percentage change in sales from one quarter to the next. We can write such a relationship linking y sub t to an exponent of the trend t using this formula. If we take a logarithm on both sides, we get the equation that you see on the board. To create an exponential trend model, we again create a new column t, which is a running index. We then create another new column, which is the logarithm of sales. Specifically, we use the natural logarithm, ln. Then, we use these two new columns in our regression model. Log of sales is the outcome variable, and t is the single predictor. Let's see the result of fitting such a regression model to the training period. As we discussed before, p-values in R-square metrics are not what we focus on. Instead, we look at the predictive performance metrics and charts. However, there's something a little tricky here. Software might report forecasts, forecast errors, and performance metrics based on forecasts in logarithmic scale. For example, if we use the coefficients of this model to generate forecasts, then we'll get log of forecasts. To get dollar amounts, we need to take an exponent of these numbers. After transforming forecasts back into the original scale, we can compute forecast errors. Now we can draw the performance charts. What can we see? Seasonality in residuals remains. Also, the trend shape is not captured well, especially after 1997. This is the problem with fitting a global trend, where we apply the same trend shape throughout the entire period. What are some possible solutions? One solution is to fit a separate model before 1997 and one after 1997. The other option is to decide that the earlier period is irrelevant and use only data from 1997 onwards. Let's look at the performance metrics. Because we used log of sales as the outcome variable, then the software, here Excel Miner, computed all the performance metrics based on the log scale forecasts. This is not helpful if we want to compare to models that use the original dollar scale, like the linear trend model. We therefore need to compute the performance metrics manually by first transforming forecast errors back into dollar amounts, and then recomputing forecast errors. For example, for the first record in the validation period, the model's forecast is 8.67. This is in log of dollars. We therefore transform it into dollars by taking an exponent, and we get 5,824.29. We need to subtract the actual sales in that quarter to get the dollar amount forecast error. Next, we can compute the performance metrics based on the manually computed forecast errors. Notice how Excel Miner's reported metrics are not what we want. So instead, we computed these metrics manually in yellow. In R, if you're using the TSLM function in the forecast package, set lambda equals to zero for a log transform of the series. The good news is that the software will report all the forecasts, errors, and the metrics in the original scale, so you don't have to do the manual calculation that we showed in these last two slides. Let's now compare the two trend models that we tried fitting to the quarterly sales data. We have the linear trend, and the exponential trend models. From the charts, we see that the linear trend, the red line, looks a bit better than the exponential trend, which is the green line, especially towards the end, which is the more relevant period for us. 
If we compare performance metrics, we see the average error and the RMSC are much lower for the linear model. So, the linear trend model seems better. But of course, neither of these models capture of the very, very pronounced seasonality that is present in this series. To see another type of useful trend, a polynomial trend, let's return to the monthly ridership on Amtrak example. A quadratic trend is a specific type of a polynomial trend. It's often a good approximation for a time series. However, it's not as nicely interpretable as the linear and exponential trend models. To fit a quadratic model, we start by creating two new columns, t and t squared. Then, we fit a regression model with these two predictors. If you're using R, you can specify a quadratic trend using the TSLM function with this notation. Here's an example of an output from fitting a quadratic trend to the training period of the Amtrak monthly ridership. Looking at the performance charts, we see that the U-shaped trend is captured nicely. The forecast error chart no longer displays a trend. Although, of course, it does not display seasonality, which we have not captured with this model. What if we still wanted to fit a trend model to data that do have seasonality? Well, in that case, we'll have to first deseasonalize the series. Then we can use the deseasonalized series to fit a linear regression with a trend. But then at the end, remember, you'll have to re-seasonalize the forecasts. One important assumption to remember is that a linear trend model is assuming a global trend. What this means is that the shape that you choose is going to be the same throughout the period. This trend shape doesn't change over time. The bottom line for trend models is that linear regression is very useful as it can fit different types of trend shapes, a linear, exponential, or polynomial trend. The types of predictors we'll use are a running index t or some function of t like t squared. The outcome variable will either be the original series or some function such as a logarithm of those sales. The trend shapes that a linear regression model fits are global, so that the function you choose is fixed throughout the entire period. And for predictive performance, remember to use the predictive charts and the metrics that we discussed earlier, rather than the ordinary metrics that we sometimes see in regression outputs, such as R-squares or p-values. If you're transforming the series, such as by taking a logarithm, then remember to untransform to get your forecasts and errors in the original scale. This completes our discussion of linear trend models. Next, we'll talk about seasonality.